Hey Evil Dead fans, just a quick update on the inside of my chainsaw that I'm building and some suggestions you may want to take when doing yours. Now, as you can see, this is the actual chainsaw motor body that's been cut, it's been modified. I had to put a bracket that's attached to this body here to this plate that's on the chainsaw body. And also you can see my flywheel is installed. I put in specialty spacers behind my flywheel on the other side so I would have no flex. I drilled a, or shaved this down here, this body line, so I could put a bolt through it. I drilled a hole through the, or the motor body, to put a bolt through it to attach to this bracket, to attach to these bolts up here. And it's also attached through the body hole right there. Now when you use, you're using bolts up here. Uh, you can use Allen hid ones, which are the most common you see on the auction, but I did see one, season two, episode one, after Ash chops up the keg. I took a close up of when he's holding out the chainsaw. You can use flat heads if you, if you have flat heads. Those are correct as well. It's really just how spe specific you wanna get to certain episodes. Let me show you that bolt on the other side, where I, might, where I put it. Right in there. There's a little kind of a kind of a cubby, kind of a little indent in here. And I drill the hole and you can see the bolt right there. And you'll never notice it because the motor will be covered up. Uh, hence why I had to shave that body line down so I can get close to proper placement, close as possible uh, placement for these bolts. Now, if you have a bigger hand than mine, this one is very specific for me. Uh, you may have problems with uh, fitting it for your hand. Now this one is specific for me because I don't want to sell this one. But you can see I'm going to have plenty of room right there. I'm going to use a 7 8 dowel. Now that's the same diameter as the dowel for the pull string that I, that's used, used for the show. Um, you can go 1 inch, but 7 8 is really much, much more closer as possible. What I'm gonna do with this dowel, I'm gonna offset the hole in the dowel a little bit so it's a little bit more over on this edge. I'm gonna keep it about an eighth of an inch away from this edge so it's not rubbing against my top. And that gives me a little more room right there. Um, if you have a bigger hand, I know that they modified uh, watching Rob's fan documentary when he talked about the Ash vs. Evil Dead chainsaws that uh, Bruce and his stuntman had a hard time putting their hands in the chainsaw. So what it looked like from the auction photos looking at the gap in between the chainsaw bar is that they used somewhat of just a flat backing with a bracket. Uh, there's really no indications or indicators that they use the chainsaw motor, uh, body, or mold. But you can always use that same method of how I do a bracket. Uh, I have it on my past videos. So basically from here to here, to here will only be what you have on the inside. This whole part here would be gone. And that bracket that I make attaches here and back here. So you would have two bolt holes for your bracket and then one for your flywheel. And then you just put in your backing in there at the same time. <clears throat> and I have that on past videos, you can check that out. Just, uh, just scroll through it, scroll through the videos. Um, another thing that I'm doing right now, oh, and also if you're doing the style uh, such as Rob's done on, in the past, he does a full, complete molded piece from here all the way through. So his attachment's a little bit different from mine since my back piece is separate from my front piece. So uh, we're really just gonna concentrate on this method right now that I do. So you can see right here, I got my block sitting in here and I got this strip right here. Now, I'm starting to make my comfort pad, and I usually use this thin foam, so nothing rubs against my hand, and I hate that. I hate something rubbing my hand. I want to be comfortable wearing this thing. So, what I did on this one specifically, what I used to do is start here, and then roll the pad over on the flat backing, and then epoxy it in. But when you do that, you want to make sure you never have to mess with any bolts it may be covering again. Make sure everything's set the way you want to, so because this is a final installation uh, process. Uh, this one's a little bit different on uh, my method. I took a piece here, and I cut it out, and I glued it to this side of the body. 
Now, if you decide to do it this way, you wanna make sure it doesn't go out too far too wide because you want your block to sit exactly where you need it to be. And that's where my block's gonna be. And it's nice because if there's any gap in your metal piece back here at all, this fills it in. So you won't see anything behind it like that. Perfect. And then the next step I'm gonna do is cut out a piece from here to here, and I'm gonna have it go all the way across, all the way through here, covering all this. So it's gonna come over, come up, and over, and over. And it's gonna be epoxy to this line here, here, and here, 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 and all the way around. So, and it will also cover up this um, hole right here so you won't see any gap there. So that's, that's a way to do that method um, <clears throat> for your hand so it doesn't rub, whether you're doing a horizontal handle or you're doing a vertical handle. And another thing, if you're doing this method with a vertical handle, if you're wanting to put your handle anywhere here, you might have some problems if you use an actual motor body because see how far my hand sticks out? So you'll have to, if you do a horizontal handle, you may have to modify it to a different position or change your style of backing. Uh, sometimes the molded ones will even hinder your hand depending on how big your hand is. So if you got a big hand, your best bet is to do the flat backing. Uh, make sure the backing is black so you don't see it. Put the flywheel in with the bracket. Um, like I said, in past methods that I've done, you can just check that out on my channel. Uh, if you decide to do the full piece mold or full piece motor all the way through, uh, that's a whole different style than I do, that I do. That's more of uh, what Rob does, and I'm not exactly sure how he does that. We've talked about it, but uh, that's his secrets. So I'll let him uh, devour those secrets whenever he wants to. Uh, <clears throat> so there's that. Let me show you one more thing that I had to do with this one. To be episode one, season one, chain or Ash's chainsaw, I had to drill the hole here. Now, not every one of the chainsaws had the hole. And also, that one had the flathead screw on it. And like I said, not all of them have the hole and not all of them have that. But that one specifically had it, so I have to put it on there. But you can say, well, well, Brett, you got a gap there. No, I don't. I just use that same foam, glued a piece on, boom, covered up, done. So you won't see my hand through there. That's very, very handy. So I hope this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, or anything like that, just let me know. I plan on actually starting to mold these in the future. Um, the method that I'm gonna do for that is have the same kind of bracket from here to here. Uh, it'll come across, straight across, with two bolt holes here to install the chainsaw bar, uh, one bolt hole to install the flywheel, and then it's gonna come around, and since I do a second piece for the back, it's gonna come around and bolt right behind the flywheel. But when I do that, I'm gonna make sure I can put my flywheel on after I put my bracket on so I can get behind the flywheel and attach that bracket on the here. But that's in the future, that's, that's not gonna happen right now. <clears throat> At least not with this one. So I hope to help you guys out. If you guys have any questions or any problems, uh, let me know. So uh, until next time, you guys stay groovy.